What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be giving you my round 7 review, how I scored, where I'm ranked, my overall trade analysis, how I traded this week, along with some talking points from throughout the round. Enjoy the video guys. So if we jump straight into things, this week was hard for a lot of coaches. There was lots of, not so much carnage, but just poor scores in general. I ended up scoring 2,002 this week, which to my surprise was actually relatively decent. I managed to hold my rank, so I'm ranked 1,229, which I'm pretty happy with at this stage. I could have had a better round. I had a lot of poor scorers on field. So the guys that let me down this week, we had Ratio Fantasia, Riley O'Brien, and then the two rookies that I traded in, Dev Robertson and Farah, which I'll touch on in a second. But overall, there were lots of people that let me down this week, and so there's lots of room for improvement. I think at this stage, Ratio Fantasia is going to be going for me along with Heath Chapman, who looks like he's probably going to miss with a shoulder injury next week. So, touching on my trades and how I traded last week, I opted to go for a double downgrade. Um, it's not a strategy that I advocate, and I don't like doing it, but my reasonings behind it were that lots of coaches had Josh Dunkley, Dusty, Neil, and so they were going to be sideways trading. Therefore, these coaches weren't going to be improving their side. And with lots of teams having poor benches and poor cash generation, I thought it was a good chance to get ahead of the pack and bring in two good rookies that look to make a lot of cash. Thinking back on things, this was probably not the greatest move. I traded in Farah and Dev Rob, who both scored pretty poorly. Their break-evens now as a result aren't that great and the cash generation doesn't look as good as what I thought was potentially there. In doing these moves, I did move on Tyler Brockman and Braden Campbell, so two non-playing bench guys. So that is a positive, but I'd originally looked at potentially going a Braden Campbell down to one of those two guys and then trading a Ratio to Shy Bolton. So... I did miss out on about 70 points there. And I think from this point forward, I'm going to focus my trading around doing an upgrade and a downgrade. I think this strategy is superior. A lot of guys will probably look to do a double downgrade this week. There looks to be some great options in Collier Dawkins, Burns, Frederick, these types of guys. But for me, I think I'll be looking to target Frederick potentially and then jumping on a Riley Collier Dawkins next week, as I think he'll be cheap enough. I don't mind letting him go one more price rise if it allows me to get an upgrade this week. So that's what I'll be looking to do. As for some of the talking points this week, we had Josh Kelly. So I was interested to see what GWS would do in terms of his role this week. I thought Whitfield coming back into the side would give them that outside ability both on the wing and up half forward where Kelly's been spending most of his time. As a result, we saw Kelly actually attend some center bounces and he looked to be getting way more up the field. He was less restricted. It wasn't playing as much forward. So it looks like Whitfield into the side has definitely helped him. We did see him score 121 this week. So he's very cheap at the price. He's priced around that low 90s. He does have the round 12 buy, which is inconvenient for some coaches, but I think he's certainly one that is ready to be targeted, ready to be brought in right now. The second guy I want to touch on is Lockie Hunter. Much like Kelly, we did see a slight role change. He did look to be playing more up on the wing, as we thought would happen with Dunkley going out of the side. 
He only managed to score high 80s, but the role was a lot better. And the fact that Richmond dominated in the second half really hurt his score. I don't see most teams doing this to the Bulldogs. So I think that his scoring will increase with this new role. He should be able to get back to that 100 level. And he's also one that's super cheap. Round 13 by, which a lot of coaches are looking for as well. So I think he's certainly an option and one to monitor. The next one is one that I'm quite interested in. It's Josh Dacos from Collingwood. So last week we saw him spend a lot more time in the centre bounces. And this week we saw the same. It looks like Collingwood are using him as a midfield now. They don't have many options through there. Buckley seems to be quite impressed with how he's going inside. And he's super cheap and he's got forward status. He's one that I'm really keen on at the price. He's priced in the low to mid 70s. And he's definitely one that has an output of 90 plus. The role's there. He's one that I'll be looking to jump on probably next week. And the last guy I want to touch on is Aaron Hall. Absolutely huge on the weekend with a 143. Look, he's got that role in, in half back. And North Melbourne don't know what they're doing. They're pretty poor. They've got a lot of young, inexperienced kids. And when they've got the ball in hand in defense, they're not quite sure on where to go, what decisions to make. And so they just offload the ball to these experienced guys Lots of 10, 15, 20 metre chip kick sideways to either Zeeble or Hall. I can see this continuing. He's priced at 575. He's got dual position both defender and forward and they play Collingwood this week. I think it's a huge tick on lots of fronts. The only thing I don't like is the round 12 buy as me personally, I'm trying to get rid of these players. But there's lots of signs that point towards having Hall it's hard to turn down a guy who's outside of his two injury affected scores, has scored a low of 99 and he's shown that he's got a huge ceiling. So he'll be one that I get asked about a lot this week and I just want to say right now that I do think that it's a decent option. For those of you that are for those of you that are interested, I don't usually express what my trade plans are until later in the week because I don't usually really look until about Thursday, but I did have a quick look last night. I did have a play around. I've got Heath Chapman, who's probably going to miss, so I'll be going him to Frederick, and then with the cash, I'll probably be going Fantasia to Aaron Hall. I can also get to Josh Kelly, but I think Hall could be the play. It leaves me a little bit of extra cash, which goes towards getting the upgrade that I want next week, which will probably be Jake Lloyd. I am thinking about posting a video on the buys and how to structure your side, how to trade during this period, what my side looks like now currently, how I'm planning to get my side to where I want it to be going into this period. If you guys would like to see that content, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below. I'm also interested to see how you guys went this week. So let me know how you scored, what your early trades look like, where you're ranked, all that good stuff. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special.